thunder, there was lightning that speaks of the fire of God, and a thick cloud speaks of the anointing of God upon the mountain. And the voice of the trumpet, which represents a prophetic voice. I'm not saying that there weren't na these natural things. I'm also saying, I'm just trying to say to you, there's a natural and there's a spiritual. There's a natural meaning. These are natural things that happen, but there's also the spiritual aspect. In other words, uh, walking in the water, the, they literally, he literally walked upon water, but this also represents walking in the Spirit. We know the water is a type of the Word. It's also a type of the Spirit. Okay, the voice of the trumpet, which speaks of uh, the prophetic voice, exceedingly loud, so that all the people in the camp trembled. The word trembled, and there's a shaking anointing. They're quaking, means they were disturbed, <coughs> and, they're, and they're, they're shuddering. Now, verse 17, and this is what I want, this is what I want to say, and every time we come together, to me this is reality. And verse 17, this is the key. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to be with God. Amen. Now, there's no sense to coming out here today if we don't be with God. Amen. Now, what I'm telling yes. you is that in dead, phony religion, people don't meet with God. They just come here, someone give a speech. They have no intention uh, upon obeying. It's about a historical Jesus. Now, uh, let, me, let me say another thing. Today, what we're going to do, uh, well, my, let me give you my title. My title today is Healing Love. Healing yeah. Love, and I want, to be, I want to begin to illustrate. What we're not going to do is give a speech and then send you home. What we're going to do, we're going, we're going to preach the Word, and then we're going to, Jesus said, if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to wait upon the Lord at the end of this message, and whether we go into praise and worship for a little bit or whether we go into deliverance, I'm going to open up the deliverance section over here at the end of this message. Then we're going to pray for the sick and the press, Amen. whatever's within your life. But I want to illustrate this for you first. Now, uh, to me, uh, now I'm not, I'm not going to mention any names, okay? But Friday night, Friday night, we preached, we praised, and then we opened up the deliverance section. And in the, when, uh, when we were doing deliverance, the Spirit of God gave me a word of knowledge. And when I gave the command that the word of knowledge gave me, someone began screaming out very loud and very long and deep. The demon came out loud screaming, loud crying, and uh, just frailing uh, the person's body all over the place. Now, now, here's what I'm saying to you. I'm saying that Pastor Jan and I, we do this seven days a week. And, and there was a lot of preparation. We don't, I don't ever come in here without seeking God, without praying, Amen. without waiting upon the Lord, without spending time in study and much preparation. Okay, so there's a lot that goes into this. There's preparing the building. There's a whole lot that goes on. Now, here's what I'm saying, because I, I, I've never, I've not been, I've not always been where I am now. Because I was full of self, I was I was very demonized when I first started with the ministry. It, uh, I said it was about God, but there was too much about me. And see, we leadership, uh, there's a place where you will grow. See, you can people can be saying the right thing, but with the wrong motives. We in leadership, we can actually come here and preach and use the crowd yes. to be the deep within us. Yes, I'm preaching about something. Amen. Amen. A couple of yep. That's right. Now, what happens is, when back in the '80s, when I first started pastoring, uh, I was so full of self, I was so demonized, and you know, you could call it ministry, but really, all I had was a title position, and there was nothing but dead works. Yeah. There was very little that was ever really happening. I mean, some people, yeah, some people got changed a little bit, and that was mostly because of them going after God themselves. Amen. Now, I said all that to say this, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart because I was so fulfilled. Because Friday night, after all that happened in the church service, priest service prayer was wonderful, the praise was wonderful, the worship was wonderful, the gifts of the Holy Spirit operated very powerfully, we preached the Word of God, people went back to the praising and worshiping, danced all over the place, swinging from the chandelier, the fire of God was burning, there was smoke, there was lightning, there was thunder, there was, there was a thick cloud, Amen. all this thing is happening, and I said to say that when we opened up the deliverance section, and God gave me a word of knowledge in the middle of the deliverance section, and this yes. demon comes out by great big screaming. Yes. Great awesome. big screaming. Yes. Throwing a spell. And we're not mentioning names. Nobody needs to know. Yeah. Uh, we're not mentioning names. And, and what I'm, here's what I'm saying to you. I'm saying that that was more fulfilling to me 
than preaching the word than ministry that when I I know yes. how someone's life has changed mm-hmm. when something Amen. like that is God. released from them. I know because I have been there. My life has been changed Amen. from deliverance. I do not believe that I would be in, deliver- in ministry today if it had not been That's for deliverance. Right. Okay? I believe that Thank there's just, just too much too yeah. much in me, too much to overcome. Uh, uh, too many yes. open doors, too many open windows, too many weaknesses, yes. too many strongholds within my life, and God brought me into deliverance. Okay, so this scripture right here, Moses brought forth the people to the foot of the mountain, the beam of God. What I'm telling you, it doesn't make any difference how good I preach. If the leadership doesn't bring you to the foot of the mountain, then you have an opportunity Amen. to be with God, such a day's life and change. Yeah. I have fallen short yes. of the glory of God. Yes. Now, there's a lot that can go in there that you can be with God's prayers, you can be with God's praise, you can be with God with worship, you can be with God with the gift of the Holy Spirit, you can be with God. I believe very powerfully in the preaching of the Word. I believe in the I believe very much that uh, the Word of God being preached can just the washing by the water yes. of the word. I believe Amen. in the preaching of the word with all of my heart. I believe it's very powerful. But I there were things within my life and and if and there's one or two people here that I think this would be. There were things in my life that a thousand, a thousand Amen. sermons did not change me. Right. A thousand sermons did not cure me, but two words did. Amen. Two words were. Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm saying that when, so when yes. this demon came out with a great big, long, loud screaming and thought, you know, a full fledged spell, that I'm saying that when I know. That how that person's life yes. has changed. Yes. This is what I believe with all of my heart. I believe the fruit of true ministry has changed lives. Amen. Not how many people, not the building, right. not the budget. I believe the fruit of true ministry has changed lives. Yes. And as long as I know that people are meeting with God such a way that their life has changed, that I have peace with them. So when uh, all that Friday night, to me, Friday night was yes. very powerful. But to me, when that happened, when that demon screamed itself out of that person, there was a something happened inside of me. There was a witness of the Holy Spirit yes. God within me. And see, that's what this prophetic word, Sister Jackie, yes. it's time for biblical Christianity. Yes. It's time for the church to real practice real yes. Christianity. That's why some yes. people some people are not going to be able to handle it here. They can't handle it here. Because they, um, to say this again, yeah. they compare us to dead churches they've been to, yeah. and so they haven't seen it in their denomination for 10, 20, 50, four generations. They've not seen it. No one in their family has yeah. seen it. And they come in and think, wait a minute, we must be swapped out. Because yeah. this great big denomination with millions and millions of people, they don't do this, and here we are, this yeah. little church. And what I'm saying, if it's in the Bible, we'll go do it. We're going to let the chips fall in the main. And that's that's just where we are. Because if our life is not being changed, then there's no need to to come out. Amen. There's no need to go anywhere. There's no need to come. But if our life is being changed, if the lives are being changed, then it's it's worth it. So when we do come out here, we want you to be with you. We can't make you. God won't even make you. God's not going to make you change. But if you want to change, you'll be given the opportunity here in in multiple ways, okay? Okay, so when that happened Friday night, that was so fulfilling to me. Now, my title today, once again, is Healing Love. I'm going to get into that. Healing Love. Now, uh, Pastor, Pastor Jane, there's different ones in here. Pastor Jane, just, she, she, got the, she got the warm, fuzzy love. Yes, she does. Hang around, Pastor Jane, to get the warm fuzzies. Sure. Get the warm, fuzzy love. I'm saying that God's raising up leadership. I'm saying another aspect of love is when other people don't understand when people leave the church, we're going to open up the deliverance section and we're going to say two words yes. because if it's biblical, we're going to, I'm saying that's another aspect of love. Yes. And practice biblical yes. Christian, go and it, read that yellow sign up there. What's popular yes. is that on his right, what's right is that what's popular. Okay? Yes. And so that's, that's a, a very yes. important aspect. Now, all that I said, now turn the, I want to begin to illustrate, I'm going to take you on a little journey that I will not be able to get you all the way through. Uh, uh, because uh, uh, you're going to take more than one message to be able to yes, turn to life. Genesis 37, yeah. turn to the left. <coughs> Genesis 37. Our journey is... One, two, three. Wow. Yeah. Genesis chapter 37. Great. Now I want to talk about... Uh, 
Okay, Genesis 37. And verse 33. This is when uh, this is when Jacob believed he's been told by his by other sons that his son Joseph is dead. Okay, so he's told this that I, in verse 33, and he knew it, and he said, This is yes, this is my son's coat, an evil beast has devoured him. So the other sons will tell him, Joseph is without dead, without doubt, rent in pieces. So they're telling the daddy, Jacob, your son is dead. And Jacob ran his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins, and he mourned for his son many days. And all of his sons, so he mourned, he's mourning. That means bewailing, he's lamenting. He believes that his son has died. And all of his sons and all of his daughters rose up to comfort him. Okay, so Jacob believed that his son is, is dead, and the other sons and daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused mm -hmm. to be comforted. Right. Now, look right here just now, because we're going to say this in different ways, okay? And what I want you to understand, that in my life and in other people's life, there are things that a thousand sermons do not cure. There are certain demonic, satanic strongholds. Yep. That's why the supernatural. There's been there's been things in my life that that I, mean, I, I heard sermon after sermon after sermon after sermon, but someone called me out and gave me a prophetic word, and it changed my life. Yes. <coughs> there's been I come to church and a thousand all these sermons didn't change me, but I, the healing operated within me, and my life has changed. Amen. There was things a whole bunch of sermons did not cure me, but someone said two words, Amen. and my life has changed. Yes. What I'm saying when you bring the supernatural power of God, here's what I'm saying. Je, there, there are people, there are people that have such hurts and such wounds and such devastation within their life that they refuse to be comforted. Okay, now there's pain, there's mental pain, there's emotional pain, there's uh, there's uh, physical pain, there's sexual pain, there's all kind of pain, there's spiritual pain. People have been hurt, people have been wounded, and it brings a desolation. And there are certain things within them that when uh, uh, I, I don't have time to tell the story, but there's because in uh, I've been uh, I'd only been saved about a year, and I got very powerfully hurt and wounded. In uh, I, I can say that uh, I'll put it this way, but I'll tell you what it really was. I could say that I got really hurt and I got really wounded in ministry. There were three. The devil himself used three preachers to come at me. One of them physically attacked me. Wow. Uh, I'm telling you, one of them physically attacked me. One of them I found out was a secret homosexual, and another one did did something. And uh, I could say that I got hurt, I got wounded in ministry, but here's the real truth. What happened was, when this attack came, I got a great big demon. That's really what happened to right. me. Now I'm going to church, and people don't understand. The People are going, they, they saw me in fire for God, now they recognize I'm not in the fire. They used to see me in the front row, now they see me in the back row. Yeah. Something has happened to Bill. But, see, they had a, they could discern something is wrong with Bill, but they didn't have enough of God to get me set free. Amen, that's right. Now, all I needed was two words. Yeah, but see, now, I've only been saved, I've only been saved one year. And I'm going to churches, and churches are not casting out devils. And if there was one church that did it, but they did it, in the back room, they didn't, you know, they, you had to make an appointment and, and take two two months. And, and I did the tasers, I did not know what was wrong with me. If I would have known what to do, yeah. I would have done it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I understand Jacob refused to be comforted because yeah. they're hurting, yeah. because they're pain, yes. because they're desolation, there's barrenness. And now, I will get up, we'll say this again. I could say it was hurt and I was wounded, and I'm not, basically, I'm not lying there. But the truth is, I got a great big powerful demon, but I didn't know I had a great big powerful demon. Amen. Okay, so now, the enemy, the apostle of darkness, had been basically paralyzed. Okay, and now let me say this, and, and I had this demon for two and a half years. Okay, now, uh, what, what I'm, I never smoked a cigarette, I never puffed on any evil weed, I never drank a beer, never had sex with anybody, didn't rebel, didn't fall out of church, I'm just... Lukewarm. Yeah. And so whenever, you know, they're, they're talking about what well, God can do this, God can do that, it was like, it's like I wouldn't say no to God, it just wasn't affecting me. Mm -hmm. Jacob refused to be comforted. There could be people come to church and they refused. It means he wouldn't comply, he was denied, he was declined to regret. He refused to be comforted, which means consoled, eased, uh, and 
And he said, for I will go down to the grave, I will go down into the grave and to my son, mourning. Now basically what he does there, he speaks of workers, and makes an inward vow that puts something upon him, and that's another, that's another whole issue that we're going to be uh, addressing very soon uh, from the pulpit, possibly Wednesday night. Okay, for I will go down, and says, I will go down to the grave and to my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. His pain, his pain was so strong, his pain was so powerful. Now, what I'm telling you is that certain things can happen to you, and you're so hurt, you're so wounded, whether you're demonized, different things happen within you. And what we do, people can suppress that, put that way down there. And there. Uh, the, way I, the way I illustrate this is... It's very difficult. The church has to understand. The body of Christ has to understand that if, that if some young person in their childhood, whether it be male or female, uh, whether it be a little boy or a little girl, it, you, we need to tell these people that have been sexually abused four, five, six, seven, eight years, you just can't tell them, get saved, and you never have another problem again. Yeah. That's not necessarily true. Yeah. Okay, so that, that was very powerful one in the day that I got saved because uh, from the hippie generation, God's answer was the Jesus movement, uh, the charismatic renew movement, millions, millions of hippies were just showing up at the church. It was just just as, as God God put it in the, in the heart of the animals to go to Noah's Ark, God put it in our heart, and we're just showing up at, at the Ark at the time of the church, okay? Just millions, just millions. Means of people yeah, just they get shown up at church. It's just one of the strangest things that you you ever seen. So many people getting saved so fast that they couldn't keep up with it. So they're telling it. All you need to do is get saved. You won't have any more problems. Well, that wasn't true. And then they uh, we were told another lie. Oh, you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You won't have any more problems. Well, that wasn't true either. The more anointed you get, Amen, be right. careful getting anointed like Amen. Jesus trying to nail you to a cross. Amen. That's Come true. on, say to God. Yeah. True. Now, what I'm telling yeah. you, there can be certain things within people's life that they've suppressed, they've buried, and uh, it's yeah. down in there, and there are different times that they can erupt it like a, like a volcanic eruption. There's hearts and there's wounds in there, and basically what, what I had was a great big demon, and uh, I, won't, I won't take any further than that story because... Uh, uh, turn to Psalm 22. I just, I'm going to give you the one little illustration there. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to do some other things. Cause I'm going to, now remember now, because we're going to do something at the end here. We're going somewhere with this, and I'm, on, I'm going to be sharing on this more than one time. Okay, Psalms 22. Let me get there myself. We usually have this all marked out. We had... Uh, Think last night, so I'm not on top of things like I normally am. Psalms 22 and verse 22. I I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the congregation. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Now, here's what here's what I will say. That I'm going to show you scripture for this, okay? Because I want you to see. That God understands in the Scripture what the different strongholds and different things will be in people's lives, and God will explain it right in the Scripture what it is and why it's there and how to get out of it. That's the thing. Okay, so He says, "In the midst of the congregation will I praise Thee." Now, who who would not want you to praise God? Amen. The devil himself. Okay, Satan. Then I will show you this in the Scripture. Different hurts a different wound. There's going to be different demonic attacks that get your mind, that get your body. Different things are going to happen. Satanic things are going to come against you to stop you from praying, singing, and praising, and worshiping yes. God, receiving the Word of God, such a way that your life is changed. Yes. Okay, Moses brought forth the people to the foot of the mountain to meet with God. Yes. If we're not meeting with God, it's a bunch of nonsense. Yes. Okay, but now what I'm saying is that you can be in a place where other people are meeting with God, but you're not meeting with God. Right. I'm going to say it again. Yes. Yes. You can be where God is, but yes. you don't be with God because there's a satanic block upon you, and that's yes. what happened to me. Okay, There's a demonic satanic block against you. You are blocked, but other people are not blocked. Yes. You can be someplace where God is, and He's manifest, and so when you see other people manifest, you'll hear a demonic voice say, that's not real, because to you it's not real, but to them it is real. Yes. Okay, so uh, let me just say this, that when... Uh, I, I think it was last Sunday when when uh, God gave me that when when uh, God laid Michael upon my heart 
and uh, I'm, the spirit of weeping came upon me, I'm saying that that changed my life. Now that I believe that there was an impartation in him, but I'm wa I walked away from here, changed myself. Okay, because every time yes. and I can go right back in the spirit, I'm going to get upon upon that. I get right back in and I begin to feel what God feels for him mm -hmm. or his pain. I'm going to go right back yeah, into there yeah. and it's beginning to change my life because now when, I, when I'm around different people, I feel what I begin, I begin to feel what God feels about yes. their pain Amen. and about their hurts yes. and about their wounds. Yes, amen. Now, well, yeah, hang on, because we're going somewhere. Because we're talking about time today is healing love. Amen. Healing love. Yes. Now, what we religion, if we get self righteous, we get hardy, we get arrogant, someone come in defeat, we'll put them down. Yeah. Yeah. See, but if you've got God's heart, you're going to find a way to exhort them to lift yeah. them up. Amen. And that's, that's what right. we're going. We're going somewhere with that. I would declare your name to my brethren. See, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. We can't declare. We can't sing. We can't pray. We can't praise. We can't worship among brethren. True. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is something. One shivar. One yes. One. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. See, there's something wrong. There's yes, something wrong. It really is. Now, the same person that will be in here during song service, see, in their heathen day, they would they would not only dance in the club, they they would dance on the tabletops. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, got more, amen. But see, but, and they come here and tell go out and tell other people, oh, right, this the new life better than the old, but we dance more on the influence of the old than the new. Okay, now what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, we were not born to live in the flesh, but in the spirit. You, you and I have been made to be spirit beings. And we have been made by God to be yes. more comfortable in the spirit than yes. in the flesh. Yes. And if we become more comfortable in your flesh than in the spirit, something is wrong. Yes. We're not coming to the realm of maturation that God wants us to be. <coughs> okay, so I would declare your name if you're my brother in the midst of the congregation. Well, I pray to you, something is wrong. See, Satan doesn't want you to praise God. Because if you if you begin to praise Him, someone will show up. Who is it? Amen. God will inhabit the praises of His people. Right. Okay, so what happens is, see, what what I do, if, if I'm not meeting with God, I'm evaluating myself. I'm not blaming you. I want to know what wrong turn did I take? What, what did I do? I have any unforgiveness? I got it. What's buried way down? What's blocking me? What's hindering me? Because there's a whole lot of there's just hours of teaching right there that yeah. they don't think they will block it. I would declare your name to my brother in the midst of the congregation will I praise him. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye that the, the seed of Jacob glorify God and fear him, all ye seed of Israel. Now here's real important. For he had not despised nor abhorred the affliction, the affliction of the afflicted. And now here's here's what this word, this first word affliction means. And this is very important that we understand that. Okay, so when he said, wow. God has not despised nor abhorred the affliction, wow. the word affliction there means a humbling of self yes, because of a mistake. Yes. yes. Amen. Um, what's the affliction? Who you get humbled. Yes. You get the rug pulled out from Praise under you. you and, and a man, how many thousands of times have Praise I been there? Jesus. You get the rug pulled yes. out from under you. Yes. Yeah. You get separated from the presence of God, and if you've ever been lost, and then you got saved, yes. and you entered into the presence of God, and then suddenly, poof, dry, yes. Yes. you're of all people most miserable. Amen. So that's, that's to get your idea. attention to get something yes. wrong. I took a wrong turn somewhere. Yes. So he says, he had not despised nor abhorred the affliction. And we'll say this again, the word affliction, I mean, they humbling himself because of a mistake. Yes. Amen. Uh, <coughs> what a, what a, yes. You know, this this may not sound right to you, but uh, one of the, one of the, in my opinion, one of the best things that ever, uh, ever happened to you is make a mistake. Amen. And you learn from it. Yes. And in other words, if you yeah. play ball and you never lost a ball game, you should get so haughty and arrogant. Amen. I'm saying I'm saying that that sometimes there's a uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm saying that humble pie. To be a little yes. bitter. Yes, exactly. To the taste, oh. but it's very healthy. Amen. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. Okay, there's a certain thing that happens. So he said, I'm not, for him that despite nor hope the affliction of the afflicted. And the word afflicted, I mean the needy. Yes. Now I need God. Amen. Now I'm aware that I need God before I. Yes, Lord. 
And Psalms 119 to 67 said he went, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But yes. now after being afflicted, Amen. I'll yes, seek your word. That's I'll right. read your word. I, I, and that's a prevention that's better than the panel of treatment. Yep. You can yes. save yourself a whole lot of trouble. Just read the Bible and line your life up according yes, to that. Because he not despite nor hurt the affliction of the afflicted, neither has he hid his face from him. But when he cried, yes. when he cried to them, he heard. Yes. And my praise shall be of thee, the great congregation will come up, the meat shall eat, be satisfied, and they that praise the Lord shall seek him. Your heart shall live, your heart shall live. How many want your heart to be alive? How many want to, if we're going to be at church, how many want to be alive? I don't want to be in church to be dead, because I want to be alive. Satan didn't want, want you to be alive. So I he said, I said before, you did life, you life that you do. See, they live and they multiply. Okay, the next one to me is very powerful. Psalm 77. Psalms 77. Now remember, now keep this in line. Now, healing love. I tell you today, healing love. And the point that I want to make over and over again is uh, Galatians, I think it's chapter 5, verse 6. Faith works by love. love. Faith works by love. Okay, so love. then many times people think, well, they got a faith from you. Do you have faith? <coughs> well, if you, back, if you take your, if faith works by love, yeah. Many times the reason our faith level is down because we our love for God is weakening. Yes. Our love for God, our love for people is weakening. Now we start loving the world. We start loving ourselves. We start loving pleasure. We start loving things. We start loving money. We start loving putting the blame. Yeah. yeah. And so then our faith level goes down because we're not spending. We're not now drinking from the well. Amen. We're by the well, but we're not drinking of the no. well. We come to church, but we're not meeting God in such a way that our life is being changed. Okay, in Psalm 77, and... Uh, now, what I'm going to say here is to help people. Now, we're not, he's not despised the affliction of the afflicted. Uh, we're talking about healing love. Okay, but so there's certain things God not going to do for me. There's things i got to do for myself. Yeah. God will tell me, and one or two of you, work out your own salvation Amen. with fear and trembling. Yes, there's the time i got to pray. There's the time yeah. i got to get the Word of God. What you're going to find out, God is not going to cut the top of your head off and pull the Word in and then put your head back on. You're going to have to read it for yourself. Yeah. Seriously, there's certain certain thing that we got to do. When He said, choose you this day, whom thou shalt serve, God said, remove your foot, remove your foot. Yes. Go, there's a certain place you won't go. Amen. As he said, you you make that you keep your foot from there. Remove your foot from that place. Now go there. Amen. Now this is about restoration. We're talking about healing love. So there's certain things that you're not going to understand. That if we're going to get healed, we're going to get delivered, we're going to restore. There's something a whole lot more than getting saved and being miserable till the day you keep the bucket. Amen. I'm saying there's a fullness in the thing of God. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, and I'm, I'm also saying at this church. This is the my mandate from God is that your life be restored. Now, I believe I believe it's part of my responsibility when someone comes in that I need to discern are they are they lost or are they saved? And if they're lost, how can I get them saved? And if they're saved, how can they help them go further? And in other words, my goal is not if you're saved to not sit there like you are the, the rest of your life, how can I motivate you, inspire you? How can I get you to go further with God in the fullness of the things of God? That's what I believe. That's how yes. I live. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, in other words, I, somebody, come on, I got, yes. some, I got some sport people right here. Uh, if I have a good coach, if I'm in the Little League, don't, don't keep me in Little League for the rest of my life. Teach me how to become a Major League ball player. Yeah. Come on, St. John God. Teach yeah. me how to develop my skill. Teach me defense. Woo. Teach me how to bat the ball. Yes. Teach me how to preach. Uh, uh, pitch the ball. Okay, Psalm 77. This is extremely important. Now, this is to help you. This is not to put anybody down. I cried it to, verse 1, I cried it to God with my voice. Yes. Okay? Thank you. Can we do that? Yes. We can do that, can't we? Yes. I, did God give you a voice? Yes. Okay, we're not yes. going to use it to curse people out. No, no, no. <laughs> Amen. I cried it no. unto God with my voice, even to God with my voice. He gave ear unto me in the day of my trouble. Yes. Now, watch what you need to sin. There will be days of trouble. Yes. Amen. Well, see, how we handle adversity is a key to how far we will go with God. Amen. If a, if a demon the size of a net is still slapping me around, I'm not ready. Amen. I, uh, and I'll share it now. Uh, you know, I've said this before, but I'll share that really think, ponder this, okay? That if, if we, we, you know, people, you know, when I was young, I, I would watch cartoons and, and uh, I would see Popeye. 
come in contact with Bluto. And Papa was no match for Bluto until he ate a can of spinach. Papa ought not to get more of a can of spinach than what we do out of a Pentecostal church. Clark Kent would go to a phone booth and come out changed. Amen. How long have I come in and out of the church and still not changed? Amen. Come on, say, Jeff God. All right, Kevin, you want me to take it this a little bit further? Yeah. We ought not to get more out of two cups of coffee than at this Pentecostal church service. Yes, Lord. There's more than a caffeine buzz. Amen. Thank God. In the day of trouble, I sought God. And my sword ran in the night, which made my hand stretched out in the night. Oh. And I ceased not. Yes, Lord. Now, what you're going to see here, my soul refused to be comforted. But my soul refused, denied, to be consoled, to have ease or repent of what was going on. Now, what I will say now is one of the most important things going to come out of my mouth today. Verse 3, I remember God and I was troubled. I complained. And my spirit was overwhelmed, Selah. Now, this right here, this scripture here, this. to me is, is extremely powerful. Verse 4. Thou hold my eyes waking, I am so troubled that I cannot speak. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, hang on. Let me, let me share with you, okay? Now, maybe you've not been there, but I'll tell you, I've been there. Amen. I have been under such persecution and adversity, uh, trouble, you know, I can go on now. I've been so much coming against me, all I could do was lay upon the floor Amen. and say, Help. Yes. I could not, I'm telling you, I could not say, Help in Jesus' name. Amen. All I could say was, Help. Yes. Now, what I'm telling you is that different hurts and wounds and things can happen to you. And if you don't understand it, the, the scripture said right there, I'm so troubled I can't speak. Amen. There's reason why some people come and they can't pray. Amen. They can be here to pray, but they're so blocked in. Yes, amen. I'll say the same thing in that way. I'm so troubled I cannot speak. There are people that are so troubled. Yes. There are so many things, so much hurts and wounds and devastation and it has come to them to hurt them and wound them, to devastate them. They cannot sing. Amen. Yes. They can be where the people are singing, but and they might just, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. That's true. There yes. are people that come to church and they're so troubled they cannot praise. Yes. And they think they're their Sunday thing. They think it's these other, these, these people that are singing. They well, that's not real because it's not real to them. Amen. But it is real. Yes. Here's the question. Is it biblical? Yes. And if it's biblical, I want to know. Here, here's, how, here's how I learned it. Okay? Many years ago, I'm pastoring country church back in the 80s. And I, and I, and I, really, I realized this is where God said I could live. God said, you can live here. But the truth was. And it was hard for me to be truthful myself. The truth was, I'm living down here. Right. And everybody that goes up with God is going to have to come to the decision. Either you're going to have to compromise God's word from where you said, where God said you can live to down where you are, or you're going to have to change your life and come up. Now, this took me years. Yes. Come on, say to God. Yes. You had to fight the fight of faith. Yes. You had to climb it. You got to climb that mountain. Amen. You got to begin to contend. Yes. You got to tell God. Yes. When, when I saw God said, God, I, I, I saw the word earnestly desired to promise. I said, God, I earnestly desired to promise. I heard the mighty voice say, You just want to be seen a man. Yes. But God gave me the wisdom. Right. That was a demonic voice that I spoke. Then God, you just got to appear motives, the devil said. Yes. I said, Then God make appear. Amen. Amen. But you have to talk. You have to Amen. talk back to the devil. Amen. It's you. You do. Yeah. The devil will talk to you. And you go. Would you stay? Exactly. You begin to tune in, and he'll lead you to trouble. Now, That's right. I'm so troubled I cannot speak. Cannot speak. That you'll see some people they might be able to sing because the intensity of the music during praise that there's there's a there's an energy really just because the music is so loud and the music is so bad and people are dancing but when come time the worship it just shut down True. Mm -hmm. yeah. because they're yes. so troubled yeah. that they cannot worship. Amen. Now God said He's seeking that that will worship yes. Yes. and spirit in the truth. So if God says He's seeking that they can worship Him in spirit truth, but I'm not worshiping Him in spirit truth. When the, when the music slows down, if I'm bored and I feel dead, and this heaviness comes upon me, that's a demonic block. Amen. I'm so troubled that I cannot worship. I cannot sing. I cannot praise. Amen. Yes, amen. 
I'm saying that if, if God said, here's where God is saying that the church, this, this word about biblical Christianity, if talking in tongues, if the gifts of the Holy Spirit, if healing the sick and delivering and your, your life being restored, if God said, you can live up here, do not settle for the culture of the table. you got to fight for it. And so get your inheritance. Now, some people don't understand that. When God took Joshua and Moses the dead, go in and possess the land. Go in and possess the land that I have given to you. The word possess means to occupy by driving out the previous inhabitants. Now there's a land without, but there's a land within. Have you, anybody beside me ever found any demonic inhabitants in your mind, you will, you will, or your sacred realm, or your body? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In a whole lot yeah. of them. It is penalty. Awesome. So there's a land without, there's a land within. You're going to find yourself quite ineffective to take the land without if you don't give God the land within. Amen. Because it will cause you trouble. That's right. It will cause you trouble. Yes. And you make it vulnerable. Now, here's what I'm saying. That God said, this land I've, I have given unto you. Give it unto you. Now here's the problem. In the land there were 31 kings. Yes. And there was a Canaanite, there were Amorites, there's all these ites, there's all the and these kings had armies. Yes, they did. And Joshua had to fight and, de and defeat them. Yeah. The land that's been given to you, we got to fight to obtain yeah. what God has for us. Yeah. Come on, take them, God. So the devil's out there your fight. And yeah. one of the ways that we fight, we yes. sing. Yep. We pray. Yes. We praise. Yes. We worship. But if we are so demonically, satanically blocked that we can't even pray, right. yes. if we can't pray, if we can't worship, oh. Amen. If, we can't get, if we can't get the first place, oh. how are we going to get the second or third or home place? Amen. How are we going to prophesy, get message to tongue, interpretation to tongue, if we can't even pray or sing? Oh. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so we got to get the first base before we can get the third base, our home plate. That's right. Amen? Yeah. Okay, so then basically, he says here in the scripture, I'm so troubled. That's not a negative confession. That's the truth. It is not spiritual to lie, so you have no problem. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, I had to fight some violence, okay? It's not true. I'm so troubled that I cannot speak. Now, let me, let me put this another way, okay? Because I believe when God says about Himself, God says, I am love. God is love. While we were yet sinners, Christ demonstrated His love for us. He didn't talk it. He walked it. He demonstrated His love. Our God is love. We love Him because He first loved us. Now, what I'm saying is there could be satanic blocks. I can, I'm so troubled that I cannot love. Amen. Yes. That's why quick, sick, twisted, perverted sex with no love is so popular. But where people are terrified of love. Yes. Because to love is to open up your heart, and we're yes. terrified of being hurt again. Yes. And see, we're so troubled that there's an inability to give and receive love, and God is love. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Psalm 109. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Psalm 109, let me get there myself. Psalm 109 and verse 22. I am poor and needy. My heart is wounded within me. Yes. Now what I will tell you that you want to get, uh, you don't, I, I, uh, I say that, I don't really like being around negative people. Negative, negative, yeah. negative, yeah. negative, yeah. negative, yeah. negative. Yeah. negative. Yeah. For sure. There could be, you know, cloudy day. Oh, that's like so cloudy out there. Windy day. That's like, oh, I, 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 just, I just can't stand this windy day. Yeah. It's, a, it's cold out there. It's too hot out there. Yeah. And then the most beautiful, perfect day comes, and they come in murmuring. That's the problem. Is that we just don't have enough days like this. Negative. <laughs> wow. That's right. People like that. <laughs> 
Even a goldfish jumps out, flushes itself down the stool, and says, I'd rather be in the sewer than to live in this house. That, that's not good. That hey, last part might not have been inspired by the <laughs> Thank you for one evening. One person got the courage. Yeah, that's good. I am poor and needy. See, what, I, what I'm saying is sometimes you've got to admit to yourself that you're not there yet. That's right. And there are going to be people going to tell you that's a negative yeah. confession. You don't have to say that over yourself. And what I, what I found out, and I could, believe me, I could go on for three hours right now, but I'm not, I'm not going to beat that drum. But sometimes you've got to admit to yourself, here's what I had to admit. I had to admit, God said I could live up here, but the truth was I'm living down here. That's right. And I realized, oh, I don't, I don't know how to get from here to here. Amen. So that's where faith comes in. Yes. And that's where faith works by. Love. And if you love God and you know that God loves you, yes. God, when, when we come back to this, that, that in this dream, ah, do I have to go there? In this dream that God gave me, in this dream, I go to this little skinny guy. And I go to the little skinny guy in this dream, and I go, and, and grab me by the shoulder, don't you realize that we've been called to bring revival to the city? So I'm going, who's the skinny guy? <laughs> this person, that's right, who's, who, who's the skinny guy? Oh, it's my spiritual condition compared to what God has for me. Oh, wow. Make, I'll make fat That's your bones. Awesome. Wow. Fatness talks many times of the anointing. Yes. The skinny wow. guy was. Wow. That's great. Me. Right. And what I realized, what came out of that was this message that I preached there for a while. See, and here, here's, where, here's where we could be. Oh, God, we, we plant me pipe we want rev- How come you don't want revival, God? The truth is, He wants it more than we do. Amen. Yes, that's right. That's because if we really want, we'll pay the price. Yes. yes. Amen. We will begin to contend. We'll separate our lives from God Amen. Himself. Yes. Yes. Most of what for the people to the fruit of the mountain to be with God. Yes. Yes. I want to get to. Yes, Lord, help us, Jesus. Sincerity and truth, Lord. Some of the most miserable people. That you'll see in churchmen say 30, 40, 50 years. Yes, mm-hmm. for sure. They've lost their fight. Yeah. Yes. One of the soft, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so real. Psalm 109, verse 22 I'm poor and I'm needy. My heart is wounded within me. I had to realize that, let, let me. So that you understand I'm not talking about you. The reason many people that has been saved 30, 40, 50 years is they've experienced so many hurts and wounds and disappointments. See, here's where the frustration can, can come in. The frustration and misery trying to get a lot of people to go where they have no intention upon going. And you get frustrated. Yes. And you're living in a constant state of frustration to try to get them what God has for them, but they don't want it. They hear about it, but not willing to pay the price to get there. So, then the preacher can fall away from God and blame the people. Yes. The people blame yes. someone else. Very true. And that's why Mary came back to so a lot of former preachers in hell. Yep. It got to them. So the key is, is not trying to get other people to go where they have no touch upon going. Right. The real question is, do I want to go where God wants me to go? Yes. And the question for you, yes. do you want to go where God yes. wants you to go? Yes. Or will you just come and hear someone talk about where they're going? Nope. Amen. Oh, wow. Well, going all the way. Woo, woo, woo. That is God. God. Word. Lord. Amen. Oh. Psalm 142. Hang on, because we're going somewhere. Psalm 142. Now we're going to, this, this is going to help us with some issues here, okay? Psalm 142, verse 6. I tended to my cry, for I brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Yeah. Yes, Lord. I'm telling you, every one of us yeah. need 
things to come against that that's yeah. bigger than I. Amen. If God doesn't come through, I'm going under. Amen. So there be things come against it. I got to thank God. Amen. I got to trust God. I got to believe God for myself. It won't be about a television evangelist. It's about who am I when I stand before God for myself. Can I fight it? There will be something in your life. In David's life, it was a Goliath. Yep. There will be something in your life that's going to kill you or you're going to kill it. That's right. It's going to bring you under or you're going to defeat it. Either it's going to overcome you or you will overcome it. It's a taste of your faith. It's an opportunity to prove your faith and loyalty to God. It's not about ministry. It's not about trying to get other people to go. And we ourselves don't get what God has for us. Are you kidding me? Amen. That's what it's all about. God. Now, here's what David realized and said. I'm going to tell you, I've been there. Have you ever been to church and time to pray and couldn't even open my mouth. Yes. Time yep. to sing and time to praise him. Now listen to what David says, verse 7. Bring my soul out of prison. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Lord. I hope you never, 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 ever find any cassettes. Or by preaching back to where well, we can't even call preaching one of little talks from back in the 80s when I passed out of the country. Because you were here of someone that's so bound up. Right. David says, bring my soul out of prison. You ever been uh, terrified of love? Yes. Yeah. You ever uh, been afraid of really letting people in? Yep. Yes. 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 You ever been in a position where I, 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 I don't yep. mind going to heaven, but I don't mind Jesus being my Savior, but now that you're talking this Lordship stuff, <laughs> yeah. give up control. <laughs> I like making decisions and wanting God to bless my plan. Uh, you know, we try to get, we try to get, see, the, the tail doesn't wag the dog. We don't have to play God. God's not our dog. You know, we, we like, uh, uh, Fido, uh, God, Fido, do flip roll over. Do things for me, God. Bring my soul out of prison. Here's what the word prison I mean. It means to be shut in. Um, I'm sure none of you have ever been there, but I'm going to tell you, you, you can... And you go out you can tell people, I know some preacher. I've been in a crowd before and felt locked up. Yep. yep. See, four or five people when they're talking to hear a demonic voice, they're talking about you. Yes. Like you. Amen. Yeah. And then accusation. Yeah. What did you, what did you say, devil? Yeah. You know, I... Yeah. Where did that come from? Yep. Let my, bring my soul out of prison. It means, it means to be shut in. It means to fasten a person. It means to shut up, to give up. It means to close up. It means to be enclosed. Yes. And the truth is, many people can build these little invisible walls. That's real. And we don't mind people being at a distance, but... Don't get too close. Because the fear of being known, the fear of being hurt, the fear of being rejected, yeah. the fear of intimacy, the fear of love yeah. can be so powerful, yes. can be so intimidating. Bring my soul out of prison that I may praise your name. Yes, Lord. An inability even to praise and worship God. Yes. Bring my soul out of prison Lord. so I can praise Him. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes. You ever had a demonic, satanic block upon you? You couldn't praise him. Yep. You wanted to praise him, yeah. but there was a block. Yep. I have been there. I'm telling yes. you, I've been there. Yep. David's been there. Oh, yes. David knew about it. Yes. Yes. Real about it. 
God knew about it. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit knew about it. Because all scripture is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Bring thy soul to prison. Then it may praise your name. The righteous shall come as me about. When thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Yes. How many believe that? Amen. 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 Praise God. Okay. Um, verse 3 in the... Psalm 143 and verse 3. Well, the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has spent my life down to the ground. He has made me to dwell in darkness. It means a dark place, dim, hiding. It means where light is withheld. We, we speak of, of depression. Those that have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed. The word overwhelming. I, I'm fainting. I feel fever. I feel uh, feeble. I feel covered over. My spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. Okay, now listen to the meaning in the Hebrew of this word desolate. Because I'm going to tell you, I've been there. Maybe one or two of you have been there. Because yep. what, what we're talking about is different hurts and different wounds, a different kind of trauma, different abuse that's happened in people's life, and they don't understand. They pray the sinner's prayer and they think, well, how come, how come, how come my heart is, is like cold like granite? How come my life is like cardboard? How come I'm so dry? Yeah. Okay, now, here's what, here's what this word, my heart within me is desolate. Here's what it means in Hebrew. My heart within me is stunned. My heart has grown numb. Uh, I would wonder, you know, <laughs> Pastor Jan and I would be lying in bed, we're watching the news, and they would say, Something happened to this little kid, and she and she's trailing and going back and forth. How can, how can anybody do it? And she's crying. And how can anybody do? It? How can anybody do that to a child? How can anybody? Do that? My heart is dumb. I don't feel what she feels. Right. Back then. Right. So many times I just get out and go to the other room, because her heart was so tender. Yes. Her heart was so loving. She felt, but my heart, see, what I'm telling you, here we are in unity, but she could feel things I couldn't feel. Right. And I've been there too, right? Now, what I'm telling Amen. you yes. is that some people that have, haven't had the wounds and the hurts and, and the abuse, the trauma that you've had, they don't understand. Right. Here's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that God understands and as a church, we've got to get to the place that we got to do this heavy burdens. That's right. And, we're going to, and that's what we're going to do here today. Amen. And we're going to do this from time to time. And what I'm saying is, if the letters in the Bible, we're going to do it and let the chips fall with the Amen, that's Lord. Right. That's, Thank you, that's Jesus. what we're going to do, okay? Now, okay, so my heart is desolate, which means that stunned, my heart has grown numb, my heart like destroyed, wasted, destitute, ravaged. And you could be in church and you feel that. And other people don't understand that. Now, we're going to begin, it's going to begin the turn right now. We're going to begin to get peaks of the answer, okay? Because we're going to begin working to the way of the answer, and we're going to get there. Amen. Okay, Psalm 145. I never forget listening to an old cassette of uh, Kenneth Hagin Sr., and uh, the first time I, I, didn't even, I didn't even know the scripture was in the Bible. I was listening to a uh, cassette they had my many years ago, probably back in the 80s. And uh, I got such revelation of this. I just love the scripture. Psalm 145, of verse 8. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, yes, slow to anger and of great mercy. Yes. The Lord is good to all and His tender, mer tender mercy yes. are over all of His works. Verse 14. Lord. The Lord will uphold all, uphold all that fall, you, and will raise up those that are bowed down. Yes. Now, what well, I'm awesome. telling you, now hang on, because we're going to undo the heavy verse, let the yes. press go free, yes. that whatever, what I'm saying, that yes. what the problems yes. that we have, God has an answer. Yes. Okay? Yes. Now, yes. when yes. when God, when in the 80s, on past this country church, I realized, yes. this is where God said it could be, but the truth was, I'm living down here, and I had to, I told God, I don't care how long it takes, I don't care how painful it is, 
that remove everything from me Amen. that if yes. I if that if it becomes so painful to me that I yield to God, stop, don't talk, Amen. don't stop, don't right. talk. Yes. If it becomes so painful, yes. even with my pride Amen. and yes. whatever's yes. in me, yes. if it becomes so painful Praise that I yield, God. stop, don't stop. I give you yes. permission right. to overrule my will, Jesus. and He did that. Amen. Okay? Yep. Okay. The Lord will uphold all that fall down, and will raise up those that are bowed down. Yes. Okay. The enemy. The enemy wants to put something upon you. You become angry at God. You begin to lash out. You rebel, and you fall away from God. That and that fell right into the trick of the devil. Okay, that's Lord, why. That's why God the devil thinks yeah. to you to to bring you down. And sometimes God would say, "You got to. We got to fight." We God is looking for. Uh, when when David when when uh, Israel was following backslidden leadership, Saul. Saul had been rejected. Saul rejected the word of the Lord, so he'd been rejected from being king. So now Israel's following dead leadership. So when Goliath comes out and is mocking God's people, the only people on earth that had a covenant with God, they're following dead leadership, so now they are afraid, and they're running from Goliath. Yes. So God is raising up a David, a remnant church, that said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? See, when Saul's on his way down, God is always raising up a David. Amen, that's right. There may be a system out there that's on his way down, but God is raising you up. He's raising up a remnant that will not bow down. That if God said we're going to pay the price to get up here, and David has the anointing, and it's the anointing, the covenant that had not been broken, that put the faith in David. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's what we want. That's what we want to be. Give it to us, Lord. Oh, reality and truth, Lord. Amen. Psalm 146. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, uh, verse 7, God will execute justice for the oppressed and will give food to the hungry. The Lord will loose the prisoners. Yes. God will loose yes, he will. the prisoner. Yes, he uh, will. You kidding me? Only one or two, amen. But I will say, uh, I must not be communicating very well. Because I can tell by you, as you're not hearing what the Spirit is. So it, it, it can't be you. It must be me. So I'm going to try to communicate better. God will send you free. Amen. Don't pretend you don't have any chains. That's right. Come on, yes. saints of God. God will loose, which means undo, untie the prisoners that mean people that are in bonds. Let me tell you a horrible, horrible, wicked bond. Selfishness. Yes. Pride, unteachable. Right. Yes. Yes. We're not talking about robbing banks and being a mass murderer. There's their thing. Uh, God will resist the proud. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna begin now. Praise God. Let me. I'll just go give the short version here. Don't turn to this, but in John chapter eight. And when I, when I read this, I saw something I, I had forgotten. Jesus is in the synagogue. <coughs> in John chapter 8, Jesus is teaching. And in the middle of his teaching, they bring to him a woman caught in the very act. My first thought was, they brought the woman, but they didn't bring the man. Exactly. Amen, that's right. Sure, that's wrong. I'm waiting on you. Yeah. You're so worth it. Yeah, both were. Sure. Yeah. And so uh, they say, the the law says stone him, stoner. Yeah, I just got to explain this. Uh, you know, a couple yeah. people when I talk about puffing on <laughs> yeah. yeah. <coughs> explain something. <laughs> Some of them yes. take this the wrong way. <laughs> when I'm talking about puffing on that evil weed. We're talking about throwing rocks and stuff. Yeah, yeah, big ones. Now, <laughs> there are going to be people coming in that door who have missed the mark. That's true. And there are going to be people, the ones that reject them, religious people. Yeah. That will be wanting to put them down. Yes. So what does Jesus say about this woman caught? In the very active adult. How did he treat her? Well, let the one who has no sin cast the first stone. And he says to her, Woman, where are your accusers? Mm -hmm. She said, Lord, there is none. Then he says, Go and sin no more. Yes. Now, what I'm saying is, 
that is my title today, Healing Love. Uh, stoning her or putting her in jail wouldn't have healed her. No, for sure. That's true. God is love. While we were yet sinners, yes. He demonstrated His love. Yes. We love Him because He first loved us. loved us. Jesus was the only person that could have thrown stones. Amen. That's right. But He did. That's right. He forgave her. Amen, Lord. Now, what I'm saying is, and I used myself earlier, because I, as a new believer, I got very demonized. I got a great big powerful demon, and that's a whole other story to go into that. And people realized they saw me before on fire for God, and they saw me wounded. And they thought there was something wrong with me, so, so they thought I was forsaking God, but I wasn't forsaking God. Right. They could discern something <coughs> is wrong with Bill, but they didn't have enough of God to uh, know how to undo <coughs> the heavy burden that yes. I was carrying. Because what I had was a great big demon. Yes. That I got set free from, from by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. No, nobody said come out. People didn't know how to say come out, and I didn't know how to do it myself. And so uh, a word, a, a prophetic word came to me, and it just I was in an automobile, and the, the word came. There was a word given to me, and it just, it lifted off of me and went through the roof of the car, and I could feel it going Praise through the Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Now what I'm saying is, God. God knew how to use a 70-year-old woman to give me a prophetic word to set me free. Amen. Because people didn't know how to say two words. Right. God is good. Now, to say the same thing another way. Remember there was a woman in the Bible called Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. And Mary Magdalene was a... Yep. Who the Bible says, Jesus had cast out yes. Amen. seven demons. Oh, I wish I'd ever I had a long time that. How did Jesus help her? I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> Love. Amen. What are you talking about? I'm talking about healing love. Amen. I'm talking about when she Thank met Lord. Jesus. She didn't need what she was doing before. Amen. Amen. And the defilement, contamination that came upon her through her sexual sin, he knew how to <coughs> get her free. Amen. Amen. Thank it's you not who we are when we first come in that door. Praise mm -hmm. God. Come on, saints of God. Amen. Amen. That's right. You're going to be totally rearranged, totally changed. Yes. Let me say the same thing another way. We're right. talking about healing love. Remember Jesus said, I must go through Samaria? And there he is. He said, uh, so he meets the woman at the well, John chapter 4. And, uh, it, you know, woman, give me, give me a drink of water. And if you, if, if you knew, if you knew, if you knew, if you, if you knew, if you, you don't know, but if you knew, Man. if you knew the water that I shall give you shall become in you a well, sir, give me this water. Yes. Sir, give me this water. <clears throat> and he, his response is, not about the water or his response is ah, go get your husband yeah sir I have no husband Jesus said well you have said you've had five husbands and now you're shacked up and then she gets theological Samaritans say worship this way and, and the other people say worship this way and basically the disciples had just gone to food she meets Jesus and I'm saying there's healing love given to her because she's under the mentality the more people I sleep with the happier I'll be and how well had they been working for her Amen not real well. That's right. Okay, so I'm talking about healing love that over and over again Jesus began to meet with these people and uh, I, let me just say this then because we're getting the airport's in sight. When in Luke chapter 4 which is my favorite chapter out of the whole Bible Jesus led by the Spirit to the wilderness 40 days before he be tempted to test of the devil and, and when starvation sets in, the devil begins to tempt him with food. Yes. 
the devil will wait till we become vulnerable and weakened. Yes. yes. And every time that Satan talked to Jesus, Jesus spoke the word. Yes. That's what that's why hell tries to stop you from reading the Bible and coming to church. Yes. Because you hear faith comes by hearing. And <coughs> it's when you read the word, it becomes a voice to you. God begins to speak to you. And then you speak out. When the temptation comes, you begin to speak the word. Okay, so every time hell spoke to Jesus, he spoke the word. And then the Bible says, Satan departed from him for a season. And then angels came and began to minister to Jesus. Yeah. That's, verse, that's Luke chapter 4, verse 14. Jesus returned. In verse 14, Jesus then returns in the power of the Spirit. Amen. Four verses later is that where a whole lot of people want to be. Jesus coming to the synagogue, the Spirit got upon me. Now here's what he says. <coughs> we could, the same thing, we could, go, we could go to Isaiah 61, but I'm, I'm not going to take the time. He says that the Spirit of God is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor. The book of James said, has not God chosen the poor of this world to be rich? And faith. So you find a whole lot of people with a whole lot of money, they don't think they need God. That's Amen. Right. So God said, Had not God chosen the poor of this world to be yes. rich? Yes, Lord. In faith? Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus then stand in the synagogue, the Spirit of God is upon me. Why? Why would God anoint someone? Why would God anoint you? Why would God anoint a church? Amen. Why would God anoint the body of Christ to heal the broken? Amen. Yep. Yes. <coughs> so not, to pe pe not to put people down because their heart that was desolate. Amen. Not because the heart is broken. Not because they've been hurt. Not because they're wounded. Not because their soul is in prison. So in prison. They can pray, sing, pray, worship, dance. Amen. Yes. Okay, so when someone comes in and they are so wounded, so desolate, so broken heart, so overwhelmed. God is trying to anoint us to the place that the, the broken hearted can be healed. Yes, Lord. Here's the question. Will I have the love for God and other people to pay the price to contend for the anointing? Yes, yes Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Or will I go back to loving myself, mm -hmm. loving pleasures, loving the world? Remember the three G's? Yes. The gold, the glory, the girls, or you can put the guys in there. The devil bring someone. Yep. And they'll look good. One thing to God. Yes. yes, that's true. To try to keep the body of Christ, the body of Christ, which is the church, Jesus is the head, we are the body. Jesus here, this is the heart of God. That when people come, now remember, in the very beginning I said, Moses brought forth the people to the foot of the mountain to meet with God. That's why. Christians do not exist to hear preachers talk. That's right. we got to get God to the people and the people to God. We haven't won because we have people's body within the church building. We've got to get the kingdom of God established within yeah. the people. Yes. Now, uh, Pastor Jim, would you get those three jars out of here? And put them up here. Mm -hmm. We're going to illustrate something for you. She's going to get something ready there while, while I, I go ahead. Well, let, let me finish this scripture in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of God to me, preach a gospel to the poor of the uh, The healing of the broken heart. The, the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Anybody beside me ever, ever been in a prison of fear? Yes, anybody, yes. Anybody ever known fear like that? I'm telling you, I'm in fear. Yep, yes. Anybody beside me ever been in a, in a, in a prison of rejection? Yes. yes. And it says, the recovering of the sight to the blind. Um, did uh, Balaam have a little sight problem? Yeah. Yes. Sure. <laughs> did Samson have a little sight problem? Yeah. 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 So Jesus yes. that says, okay, if you can't see, I'm going to recover your sight. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, yes. Hallelujah. Now, what I'm saying is, this, this prophetic word, the biblical Christianity, yes. I'm saying that Jesus came to destroy the works. For this purpose was the Son of God manifest yes. to destroy the works of the evil one. 
Amen. Here's what God, in my opinion, does wants to do is just assemble crowds and think we won because we got a crowd. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And if you go talk in tongues, you begin to give message to the tongues, interpretation of prophecy, they may throw you out. Yeah. And if you begin to say two words in there. Amen. I'm saying <laughs> that there's right. a minimum term. If we're going to do this, I'm true. saying if you're, if you're going to do this, you're going to have to find out what God says. The only way this can be done is being in alignment with God. Yes. Because if God doesn't do it, it's not going to happen. Amen. If God does not build the house, yes. they labor in vain. Come on, saying. So that's basically the the, the gist. <clears throat> so uh, every now and then I had to fight our thoughts. I'm not choking a pair, but I'm going to choke a five hundred pound gorilla. <laughs> Because in Jesus' day, many times you, you look at the Bible, and, and many times there was many times that there was there was a healing, there was a, a a demon cast out, and they went and told people, and the multitude came. Amen. Nowadays, you go tell people, and they say you must be going. Yeah, that's right. That's the devil's work. Yeah. And see, Satan wants to discredit the supernatural. Yeah. <clears throat> and so the temptation will be to compromise to try to be spiritually and politically correct rather than scripturally correct, and the only way we can have God's favor. Is to line up with God's that's word. Right. Right. Thank you, Jesus. All right, man. That's that's how. Uh, all right. Yeah, that's I'm gonna try to. Favorite Lord. Uh, Amen. Turn to Jeremiah 30. Amen. I'm thinking about where the airport is. I may love God. Yes, yes, yes. Lord. Love Lord. Amen. Okay, my title today is Healing Love. We're talking about faith works by love. Yes. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17, For I will restore health unto thee, yes, I will Lord. heal Thank thee you, of your wounds. Thank you. Thank it's you, not Jesus. a negative confession that many of you have been wounded, you've been hurt, That's you've right. been traumatized, yes. something has happened, if, if there's been abuse, I will restore health. The yes. word health, I mean, wholeness and perfection unto thee, I will heal thee. The word healed, I mean, that will cure you. I will repair you. I'll make you whole. I will restore you to normal. How many want to get there? How many want to get there? We want to be restored to normal. Normal, that's Evan's normal. Yes, yes. Amen. Well, well put, Pastor. Amen. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 31. And uh, and verse 1. At the same time, saith the Lord, I will be God of the families of Israel. They shall be my people. Thus saith the Lord. The people that are left in the store that found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to call some rent. Verse 3, Jeremiah 31, verse 3, The Lord has appeared unto thee of old, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. I, God, have loved you. I, God, love you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn thee. The word drawn there means, in the Hebrew means, I have developed you. God is drawing it. Now, let me back up because I want to check this again because now, now we're coming out of the holiday season. Okay, that we, you know, we may pray with God. We, we want, we want revival. He tried to draw us into revival. He wants revival more than the church wants revival. He's trying to draw us with an everlasting love to be willing to, to give up our lives. That what was preached last night. That the death and then was resurrection on the other side. Yeah. I have drawn thee, therefore, with the loving God. I have drawn thee, I will build thee. Oh. I, God, will build thee. We did not tell Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. I will make you to a father of nations. Yes. A 75-year-old man with a beard wife, I will make you to a father. I, God, will make you, I will, oh. I'll make you to what you can't make yourself into. Amen. Amen. Praise God. As to flesh. I will build thee, and thou shalt, thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with tabrets, with tambourines, and thou shalt go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Oh. We're talking about after 70 years of captivity, we're talking about their 70 years of chastisement. God will chastise them that he loves. Anybody beside me ever had the rug put on from any of them? Amen. Because he loves you. He'll block yes. some doors you try to go through. Yes. Thank you, Lord. God, my God. Amen. Praise God. Oh. 
Just back yes, up and be said this again. <laughs> If he has to, if you start to do something like Balaam was going to dwell the will of God, God said, Thou shalt not. But Balaam's self idolatry said, I will. Mm -hmm. So God blocks his way. Balaam's on a donkey. <laughs> I'm free now. He's on a donkey, and the angel of God is blocking the donkey. The donkey can see the angel of God, but Balaam can't. Yeah. And time goes on, Balaam gets beat up with the donkey, kid beat up with the donkey, beat up with the donkey. Pretty soon the donkeys, God start talking to Balaam through the donkey. And Balaam start talking back to the donkey. <laughs> Have you ever noticed when we stop praying, we get a little lukewarm, we stop reading the word, and church attendance go down, you end up talking to a jackass and not even realize it? Yeah. <laughs> the jackass is talking to God, Balaam, and Balaam talk to a jackass. Yes. Boy, that's real. Now he stopped talking to God. Yeah. That's why he's talking to a... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so after seven yeah. years of chastisement, God says, I'm on. I've drawn you. He will only chastise them that he loves. After a season of chastisement, Verse 5, thou shalt make, thou shalt plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant, and they shall eat them as common thing. In other words, this barren land, once again, is going to bear fruit. You're going to plant, and you're going to be there long enough to eat the fruit of what you plant. Verse 7, for thus said the Lord, sing with gladness. If you've ever been, here's the picture, 400 years of bondage, 400 years of slavery, in Egypt. Yep. Egypt represents the world's piece of bondage. 400 years. 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Then they get to the promised land, they contaminate it, they defile it, and their chat God sends the prophets, they kill the prophets. So now they're chastised. After 70 years of chastisement. Yes, Lord. You ever been through a season of chastisement? Yes. You ever been dry for a while? Yeah. And then when the love of God once again draws you, Yes. And you start coming alive again. Yes. You talk about singing with gladness. Amen. Yes, yes Lord. Seventy years. Thank you, Jesus. Seventy years, oh. 70, 70 years of captivity. Oh. Seventy years out of the will of God. For thus said, verse seven. For thus said the Lord thy God, sing with gladness for Jacob. For thus saith the Lord, sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nation, Pub publish ye, pu praise thee, praise ye, say, oh, say the Lord, say the people, the remnant, the remnant of Israel, yes. behold, I will bring them from the north country, and gather them from the coast of the earth, and with them the blind and the lame, yes. I'll bring the blind, I'll bring the lame, the woman with child, and her that travaileth, with child together, oh. a great company shall return there. Yes. They shall come with weeping. Yes. They shall come with oh. weeping and with supplication. I will lead them. Thank you, Lord. Who are these people? Yes. These are people that shot themselves in the foot. Yes. I needed God. What did David say? Help me get my soul out of prison. Yes. Help me get my soul out of prison. Help me get healed from this wounded, from this devastation, from the trauma, from the hurt, from the abuse, from the abandonment, from the rejection. Heal me, God. Get me out of this. Get my soul out of prison. I'm going to heal the broken hearted. I'm going to open the prison to them that are bound, the recovery of the sight to them that are blind. I will get you. I come to get you out of this. Jesus came to destroy the works of the evil one. He cut to undo the heavy work to let the oppressed go free. Come on, saints of God. Somebody needs to praise him. Lord, so real. Verse 9, they shall come with weeping. And with supplication will I lead them. When is the last time that we have wept of faith? At the end of the song service today, Pastor Jan is down here weeping. It was the heart of God weeping because she's so in the prison of God because she 
in his presence in fullness of joy. She come with weeping to a mask of herself. When is the last time I've been so in the spirit realm? I'm just weeping because I'm standing for God and God is so real to me. God said, I'm going to bring you back with weeping. See, you can be so dry, so barren, so desolate, so wounded, so hurt, so dry. God said, I'm going to bring you back with weeping. Oh. With weeping. Yes, Lord. They shall come with yeah. weeping with supplication. When I lead them, I'll cause them to walk by the rivers of water. You will. When you read the book, Path over there, right by Shamsa's left shoulder, the path, when Rick Joyner is given an assignment from God to take, uh, in the beginning, Rick Joyner was called to go to the mountain himself, and so the trophy <coughs> is about his individual journey up the mountain all they they overcome on the mountain and then coming back down. Then the Panthers, when he comes back down, he comes to this place, and now he sees these people coming off of this luxury boat, and now God tells him, now your assignment is to take them on the same journey yes. that I took you on. You're going to go through something, and you get through it, God's going to use you to take people the same thing that you went through Amen. that was so warped, you yes. had to continue, you had to fight so hard to get there, mm -hmm. and now... So there's this river that goes through there. So God tells him now, this water, this water is so alive that whenever you get tired, you get weak, you get demonically oppressed, you start feeling whatever comes against you. If you drink of this water, yes. who swears to drink of the water that I shall give you? It shall become in you a well. You'll never be dry if we drink of this river. He said, I'm going to cause him to walk by the rivers. Come on, saints of God. I'm going to cause you to walk by the rivers. Of one in the straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father. I am a father. Come on, saints of God. I am a father to Israel. Many people get healed right there. People that have been, been raised without natural fathers being in the right place. Many people right there get healed. Many people get when when you realize that God, Father God, becomes your father. And he will accept responsibility, provide for you, protect you, defend you, and yes, vindicate Lord. you as a natural father would. Now it says right there that I'll be a father. I'm a father to Israel and Ephraim, my firstborn. I'm going to just quote to you yes, Lord. Isaiah 64 and verse 8. But now, O Lord, thou art my father. We are the clay yes, and you are the potter. Yes, we are the work of your hand. When you realize as a potter would put clay on the potter's wheel and shape it and mold it, that's how God's hand is upon your life. The first prophetic word that I was ever given by God, uh, and back in the 80s, I'm, I'm pastor of this country church, I, I saw these great big huge arms coming out of heaven. These huge arms and these hands coming down into a, a, a pile of clay upon a potter's wheel and I uh, saw the hands begin to shape and mold someone, and basically God said, that's how I'm shaping you. Mm. Okay, so when you understand that God the Father is the potter, and you are the clay, yes. when you can feel His hand upon your life, shaping you and molding you, sometimes the hand may press. That's right, yes. He's trying to remove something. Yes. Okay. Right. He's trying to shape us and mold us, what we don't yeah. want to do, you'll find it, to be non-profitable to fight against the father, the potter. Yeah. You find it will not cost God. Israel could have crossed the desert a whole lot shorter than 40 years. Yeah. It's true. I could have yeah. saved myself a whole lot of time too. Okay, now, verse, uh, let's go down to verse 12. That's uh, verse 11. For I, for the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than him. Yes. Therefore, they shall come and see. They shall come and yes. see. Will they? Yes. yes. Will we? Yes, Lord. Will we come and will we sing? Amen. Yes. Remember, he said, oh, "My soul is so troubled that I cannot speak. I can't speak. I My soul is so I can't even speak. Yes, I, I can't pray. Can't sing. Can't yes. pray. Can't worship. My soul is so no. troubled. You ever been so troubled? Yes." But see, there's a way out of that. I, you're going to bring us out of the prison. For bring real. us so out of prison that I may, that I may praise you. Oh. 
They shall come and they shall sing in the height of time. They shall flow together the goodness of the Lord. For wheat, wheat and wine and oil. Wheat and prophetic language speaks of Pentecost. Wine speaks of the joy of the Lord. And oil speaks of the anointing. How many want to be anointed? Yes. How many want the joy of the Lord? Yes. How many want the fullness of Pentecost? Yes. For wheat, for wine, for oil, for the young of the flock and the herd, and their soul shall be what is a water guard. How many want to be watered? And they shall not sorrow anymore. Then shall the birds of the undefiled rejoice in the dance. Yes. Will we sing? Yes. Can we speak? Yes. Can we praise? Yes. Can we worship? Yes. Can we dance? Lord, yes. Then shall the virgin rejoice in that dance? Yes. The young men and the old together? Oh, yes, Lord. For I will turn their mourning into dancing. But the depression is going to be turned to joy. You want that to happen? See, what we don't want to do, we don't want to fall and tell pity. Yes. I will turn the morning into joy and I will comfort them. I'll make them rejoice. I will make them rejoice. I will satiate. I will bathe. I will, bathe. I will soak. I will bathe. They will be abundantly satisfied. The soul of the priest that with fatness. Remember? Remember I told you the dream? That in this dream, I went to this skinny guy. I was trying to shake me. He didn't wake up because God wants, God wants us to bring revival to the city. Wake up. I go, who's this skinny guy? Skinny guy, it's me. Uh, it's a spiritual part of me that God wants to awaken that I'm living so far below what God really has for me. Okay, so I will satiate, I will bathe, I will soak, I will abundantly satisfy the soul of the priest with fatness. The word fatness there in the Hebrew means with abundance, with anointing, and with satisfaction. You go on with God, you will be so fully satisfied, you will be so anointing, you really will come to a place that in His presence is full of some joy. Why don't you stand to your feet and I'll ask you a question. We'll shut down there, Angel. I'll ask you a question and we'll get ready to the service.